Good afternoon and welcome to this Holy Mass of Friday, the 15th week in Ordinary Time, July 17th, 2020. In today's Mass, prayers will be offered for your intentions and for your family's needs. Pray for those of you who are still not sure where the future will lead, that God who has all of all of life in his hands will open your eyes and provide grace for guidance pray for those who are without employment pray for young children who are distressed at this time pray for their parents pray for parents with children who are battling physical or mental impairments pray for grace that God may grant them the patience and the grace is needed for them to love and care for their children. Also pray for our healthcare workers who are constantly overladen with so many sick people. That God may give them the grace, the grace to remain comport to, the grace for, of comportment to stay stable especially in this very big and serious crisis. Pray for those who have anniversaries or birthdays today. Pray and ask for many more of God's blessings in their lives. Pray for those who have died and for those who may die, that God may give them the assurance of his peace. And, and pray for those who are in critical care. May they feel the power of God infused in their lungs, in their organs, to bring them to full recovery. I invite you to bring your intentions together and let us pray. Our opening hymn today is, We Gather Together. We Gather Together. We gather together to ask the Lord's blessings, to worship the Father to Jesus his Son, in this celebration, all sing with jubilation for his holy people whose freedom he wants. We all his holy people whose freedom he wants. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God our Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all and with your spirit. My dear friends, we bring the intentions we have mentioned already and will accept and take the ones that you have in your heart and place them here on this altar, just so that from this altar to God's altar in heaven, your prayers and your consent may rise like incense. To prepare ourselves for this mass, let us call to mind our sins and be so sorry for them. You were sent to heal the contrite, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. You came to call sinners to repentance, Christ have mercy, Christ have mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of the Father, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who show the light of your truth to those who go astray, so that they may return to the right path. Give all who for the faith they profess are accounted Christians the grace to reject what is contrary to the name of Christ and to strive after all that does it honor. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Our first reading is a reading from the prophet Isaiah. When Hezekiah was mortally ill, and the prophet Isaiah, son of Amos, came and said to him, Thus says the Lord, Put your house in order, for you are about to die. You shall not recover. Then Hezekiah turned his face to the wall and prayed to the Lord. O Lord, remember how faithfully and wholeheartedly 
I conducted myself in your presence, doing what is pleasing to you. And Hezekiah wept bitterly. Then the word of the Lord came to Isaiah. Go, tell Hezekiah, thus says the Lord, the God of your father David, I have heard your prayer and seen your tears. I will heal you. In three days, you shall go up to the Lord's temple. I will add 15 years to your life. I will rescue you and this city from the hands of the king of Assyria. I will be a shield to this city. Isaiah then ordered the forties of fix to be taken and applied to the boil that he might recover. Then Hezekiah asked, what is a sign that I shall go up to the temple of the Lord? Isaiah answered, this will be the sign for you from the Lord that will do what he has promised. See, I will make the shadow cast by the sun on the stairway of the terrace of Ahaz. Go back the ten steps it has advanced. So the sun came back the ten steps it had advanced. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our response to the psalm is, You saved my life, O Lord, I shall not die. You saved my life, O Lord, I shall not die. Once I said in the noontide of my life, I must depart. To the gates of the nether world, I shall be consigned for the rest of my years. You saved my life, O Lord, I shall not die. I said, I shall see the Lord no more in the land of the living. No longer shall I behold my fellow men among those who dwell in the world. You saved my life, O Lord, I shall not die. My dwelling, like a shepherd's tent, is struck down and borne away from me. You have folded up my life, like a weaver who severs the last thread. You saved my life, O Lord, I shall not die. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. My sheep hear my voice, says the Lord, I know them and they follow me. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus was going through a, conf a, a field of grain on the Sabbath. His disciples were hungry and began to pick the heads of grain and eat them. When the Pharisees saw this, they said to him, See, your disciples are doing what is unlawful to do on the Sabbath. He said to them, Have you not read what David did when he and his companions were hungry? How he went into the house of God and ate the bread of offering, which neither he nor his companions, but only the priests could lawfully eat? Or have you not read in the law that on the Sabbath, the priests serving in the temple violate the Sabbath and are innocent? I say to you, something greater than the temple is here. If you knew what this meant, I desire mercy, not sacrifice you would not have condemned this innocent man. For the Son of Man is Lord of the Sabbath. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear friends, I will reflect with you today from the Gospel reading. Jesus is doing something. In fact, they, they are breaking two laws here based on Judaic law, Judaic sabbatical law. They are breaking two laws. First, 
that are walking on the Sabbath. So because Jesus was going through a field of grain on the Sabbath. And I'm sure he was doing something that should not be done because on the Sabbath you could only walk a very short distance. So I'm sure they were walking a distance and had been walking for some time and that's why his disciples got hungry. But secondly, they were walking in the sense of getting something to eat. And so the very righteous Pharisees got involved they got Jesus' attention. Hey, don't you care that your guys are doing something that is unacceptable, something that violates our sabbatical laws? And Jesus took the time to help us understand that human life, saving human life is of greater value than any rule and any regulation. Saving a life, staying alive, is far more valuable to Jesus and to God than any rule, than any right, than any privilege that you have. Now, that is not something that I guess most of us understand very well. Because sometimes we place rules and regulations over and above human life, human dignity, and human worth. And, and this happens not just in our society, it happens in our churches. Our priests, our bishops, pastors, church leaders of other denominations and religious leaders of other we all get involved and do things like this. We, we overemphasize laws in the total disregard of the impact of those laws on human life. I, I don't know where that is coming from except that I see it here. So we seem to disregard what Jesus laid clear for us. Think about how um, at this time, those of us who profess that we are pro-life, and I think when we profess these things, we should be consistent. We, should be, we just can't choose and pick, pick and choose where we want to be pro-life and where we're not. No, if we are pro-life, we must be pro-life across the board. I, I'm thinking about how we who are pro-life, who should defend life, across and fight for life and make sure life is healthy and well lived we pick and choose we we focus on where what is easy to do we do the easiest thing the unessential some, in some cases the things that are not essential that they want we focus on because they require the least amount of sacrifice and, and we abandon the things that actually matter now, in every law, there is the letter of the law. Now, there is also the spirit of the law. The letter of the law is subservient, is, is inferior to the spirit of the law. Now, there are many of us who are hypocrites, who uh, emphasize the letter of the law because that's easy. We can, we, it's easy for us to hide under the letter of the law because it's easy to do that. But the spirit of the law that calls for sacrifice and calls for true spirituality, we, we don't do that. We find a way to catch our argument, to make us look self-righteous because we are observing the letter of the law and ignoring the spirit of the law. Now, the Sabbath law was meant as a day God set aside for his people to recognize how he freed them. First, how he created them and then how he freed them. And so that was a day where we are devoting ourselves and our entire lives to recognize the creative act of God and worshiping and honoring that gracious act of God that he gave us. Now, 
don't forget all of those rules and all of those laws are still at the service of you and I that's why Jesus came to write everything that was mistaken even the Sabbath for the Jews the Sabbath was more important and I guess it's still more important than anything else for Jesus and for God man humanity is far more important than any rule on earth because everything God created God put at the service of man it says I hand this all over to you you be the master so sometimes we, we do things that really don't make sense. I'll take something we do very often during Lent. Fasting. Fasting. You see how we are so very serious with not taking coffee, for instance, because I gave up coffee. I am so serious with not taking coffee. Or so serious with making sure I fast from 6 to 12. Or making sure I fast with a, for food, or food from 12 or from 6 to 6. We do that religiously. It's so very easy. But I wish we had the same seriousness in taking time to care for your old mother who is sick. Or for your old dad who is sick. Or for your old neighbor or for your sick brother or sister. I wish we had time to do that. No, that, that requires a lot of sacrifice. So we cannot do that. Now, my fasting will make no sense if it doesn't change me to do these things that God wants us to do. That means to put myself at the service of human life, of humanity. My fasting will be pharisaical, will be hypocritical, and will be nonsense. So today, that's what Jesus is making very clear here. We must quit prioritizing the unessential and begin to place emphasis on the essential things. Now, back home in my, in my home diocese, there, there is something that I, I personally have issues with. is the fact that the church places emphasis. Now, back home, people don't save for funerals. So that means when someone dies, that's when they begin to find money to bury their person who has died. Now the church says you have three weeks maximum to bury your person. Now there are some people, I tell you, they spend all their money, all right, trying to care for their loved one so much so that when their loved one passes, they have not even a dime to buy food, to buy food. And it drives me crazy when at such moments we see a church that is so over emphatic about the fact that you must bury your loved one even when you don't even have the money to transport the cops from wherever it was back home. You don't even have that. Now, that's a case where the letter of the law is over emphasized above the spirit of the law. That law was meant to make it easy for people, not to make it more difficult and to traumatize them when they have already been traumatized by the passing of their loved one. Our job as pastors is a service of people that God's entrusted to us, not the service of laws and rules and regulations, important as all of those are. And until we get that right, our religion will be spiritless, will be soulless, and it's impossible for us to convince the least person. So I, I pray that we may recognize if you realize the life of Jesus was on was about the ministry of Jesus was about people and persons not about emphasizing rules and regulations those are important but they also have their place so, so may God help us as a church because people believe it or not people are desperate for religion and spirituality they just can't buy what we're offering them because it's soulless, it's heartless, it's spiritless, it's mindless. It is so altar, Christus. Not altar, so altar, so out, so out of the way of what Jesus gave us. I hope that we can go back to those foundations that Jesus laid for us and the emphasis he placed on human life and human dignity and human worth and the service of life. As always, I'd like to end my reflection by reminding you that God loves you very much. 
the Lord be with you and with your spirit. Let us pray. True sorrow for sin requires a change of heart and attitude. Our prayers today include our will to live out what we believe. For a spirit of penitence in all members of the Catholic Church, that God's grace may help us place emphasis on everything that serves human life, human dignity, and human worth. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For leaders who will speak and act for the sake of those who have no voice that God may bless their ministry and that their ministry may help free all on the fringes of God of society we pray to the Lord Lord hear our prayer for the conversion of men and women emerged in lives of crime and vice especially those in positions of leadership that institute corruption and fraud and fraudulent practices and cover all of those up. God may help them hear and understand that that is destroying our society. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For respect and care for God's creation in the natural environment, that all of us may take responsibility for creation entrusted to us for our good and so care for it and protect it for generations to come. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick, especially those who are sick with COVID-19, that God may help them find healing, that God may restore them to full health of mind and body. For medical workers and for all those dedicated to caring for our sick, that God may protect them and keep them safe. That God may bless their ministry of healing. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our leaders, especially at this time, that God may help them be humble and learn from all the facts and the data available and see what works for our society, especially at this time where we're losing in thousands every day, our own loved ones, our brothers, our sisters, our parents, our grandparents. That God may help us do what is right for all of our people. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have birthdays or anniversaries or other events today or during this weekend, that God may bless them and that God may grant them many opportunities to celebrate again. We pray. To the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We ask our blessed mother's intercession as we say, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and the hour of our death. Amen. Father, hear the petitions of your daughters and sons who seek to do your will day by day, and please grant them through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer which earth has given, and human hands have made to become our bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer. Fruits of the vine and work of human hands become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my beloved sisters and brothers, pray that my sacrifice and yours be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of his holy church. Amen. Look upon the offense of your offerings of your church, O Lord, as she makes her prayer to you, and grant that when consumed by those who believe, they may bring ever greater holiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts 
we lift them up to the board. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks. Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ. Your word through whom you made all things. Whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer. Incarnate of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin. Fulfilling your will and training for you a holy people. He stretched out his hands as he endured his passion. So as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with all the angels and saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we are claimed. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy therefore this gift we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like a dew fall, that they may become for us a body and blood of your Son, our Lord, Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, the Lord Jesus took bread. Giving thanks, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, the Lord took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory. With the first acclamation, let us proclaim the mystery of our faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have felt us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Timothy our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all we pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints, who have placed you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God Almighty Father, the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray in the words our Lord gave us, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord Jesus be with you always and with your spirit. Dear friends, let us offer each other the sign of God's peace. From me to all of you, may God's peace rest and abide now and always. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace.
Look up, my sisters and brothers, and behold the Lamb of God. Behold, He who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. Let only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ bring us all to life everlasting. Let us pray. Having consumed this gift, we pray, O oh Lord, that our participation in this ministry may bring us the saving effects and may help us grow in its grace. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Prayer to St. Michael the Archangel. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in our battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and sin of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray, and do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell, Satan and all the evil spirits that prowl throughout the world, seeking the ruins of souls. Amen. Before the final blessing, I'd like to take a moment to express my thanks to all of you for joining us and for all those who may join later. If you forget anything I say, remember that you are the delight of God. Learn to love you as God loves you. Because when you learn to love you, it becomes easy to love others. But unless you love you, it's so very hard to love and to treat others as God loves you and treats them. So always remember, you are loved. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. The Almighty God bless and keep you. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. This Mass is ended. We go forth in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. We're going to sing, How Great Thou Art. O Lord my God, when I in awesome wonder consider the work that hands have made. I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder, thy power throughout the universe display. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee, how great thou how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great thou art.